So we want to do a review of Publix Gasparilla Distance Classic, mm -hmm. which is hosted every year in Tampa, Florida. Yeah, it's really awesome because it's a race that is right in our backyard. As Kevin said before, he's done a couple of them, but this is my first time participating in the half marathon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, typically, well, I guess we'll walk through like pre-race stuff, registration. Um, registration's always been easy. They open about like eight months before the race, typically. Um, then they also, at least this year, they offered registration all the way up through to the Friday before. So the race is held on a Sunday. Um, and the expo goes Friday, Saturday. Yeah, Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you could register in person at the expo on Friday. And then run one of the events. And then run one of the events. So they offer a 5K, an eight, well, 5K, 8K, and a 15K. Mm -hmm. um, and they offer a, a handful of different challenges. Well, in addition to the half. In, sorry, in addition to the half mm -hmm. marathon. And a handful of different challenge, challenges that uh, encompass um, multiple of the races together. Um, and I haven't done any of those personally, um, but there is a, a whole group of people that really love their uh, Michelob Ultra and other challenges. Yeah with the, the race people. Uh, so registration was very easy for us to do. Well, and we, we registered right after our Disney marathon mm -hmm. that weekend. So that was <laughs> mid January. We were on a race high and we were like, Oh, time to do Gasparilla. Well, I'm always on a race high, but I know. But... Did you want to tell, tell them why you registered for the half marathon? <sighs> I wasn't going to do it because I said Disney was going to be my only half marathon. And then I saw the medal. I saw the medal and was like, oh yeah, that's a nice medal. I'm gonna get it. She is pretty, this one. So what's really cool with Gasparilla is they've stuck with this theme for many years. So my first half marathon was in 2015 for the Gasparilla half marathon. It was slightly smaller, but it had a different theme, but still the, the, the main skull with the loose jawbone. Oh yeah. Um, and then last year looked a, a little bit different as well. Um, not last year, because we didn't do it because it was virtual. The year before the year it was before the octopus theme. The octopus theme, the octopus the theme which is really cool. Um, but that's something that's also, um, if you're looking for like a nice race series to have metal wise is it's very consistent in theming, but they do accent based theming differences every year. And the lanyard going along with it is really awesome. It also matches. The this is shirt. my favorite race shirt that I have gotten. Mm -hmm. This looks like a tattoo. Super cool. It's pretty cool, yeah. They did a good job with their colors and metal quality this year. What's really cool with uh, Gasparilla Distance Classic is it's hosted on Channel Side. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with the Channel Side area in Tampa Bay, is it is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, very open. It runs along the side of the bay. So uh, when you're running, we started at 6 a.m. You run Davis Island, which I think we spent four and a quarter yeah. miles on Davis Island. So it's dark. They have people that are out there. They have great aid stations about every mile. Um, so it's an enjoyable experience. It's kind of surreal running through and you know, kind of quiet getting you in, involved in, into the race. You cross over the bridge and right as you know, the sun was rising, I was hitting mile seven and yeah. change. So then the rest, other six so on miles was with the sun up and it was just you have the bay on your your left or right if you're coming back a lot of good race support mm -hmm. um, and it's just gorgeous you have the nice breeze coming off of the water too so even if it's a humid or a hotter day um, you have a nice breeze to help kind of break the heat down for us for the first half marathon that i ever did kevin actually paced me so he stuck with me this was my first half by myself mm -hmm. and so it was really funny to see he said that the sun was coming up for him at mile seven that is not where i was <laughs> when the sun was coming up i was just about i think crossing over 4.5 so i was right on the overpass about to go on a channel side which was beautiful because then i was so up high to see the water mm -hmm. and the sunrise we actually passed each other because the course looped back over itself on channel side when i was at the six mile mark and you were at like 11 i was 11 right at change, the, yeah. yeah i was right at the halfway point so oh. six and change about is, yeah a, about nine miles is on channel side so you go four and a half down you loop back and come four and a half back mm -hmm. and you go right to the finish line right on channel side. Yeah, it was awesome. And what's cool about channel side too, and even with Davis Island is there were so many people that live in the area that were out on their golf carts mm -hmm. and in chairs, blasting music. There were some performers along the race mm -hmm. route too. So people on stilts and fire twirlers and, um, 
lot. It was awesome. A really awesome atmosphere. Yeah. And then they also have good, I know in past races, so they have the halfway mark, which is a big, pretty much like a pseudo finish line, but yeah. it says, Hey, you're halfway here. Um, I'm pretty sure they have it piped with water. So if it does get too hot and toasty, um, it turns into a sprinkler and they have other sprinklers on the route too, that you can choose to run through or not. Um, to kind of cool yourself off during the race. I did love that. The sprinklers were awesome, but like you said, I did like that it only covered one lane of the road and you could choose to avoid it if you didn't want to get your shoes mm -hmm. wet or like didn't want to get wet at all. Yeah. Um, there were ample aid stations, not so much on Davis Island, which you had prepared me for, but once we got on Channel Side, so many aid stations. And again, because the course loops on itself, it's like the same amount of aid stations mm -hmm. each way. As yep. you're hitting it, which and is really nice. They had porta potties at every aid station, so every yes. mile they had a slew of porta potties. So if that happens, you weren't really waiting. I don't think I, I didn't see a single line at, yeah. in front of the porta potties at all. Nope, not at all. That yeah. was amazing. Now, as for race support, um, we talked about the aid stations at every mile. Now, the nutrition that they've had, um, I believe that they've always been partnered with Gatorade um that i'm aware of for so they had gatorade endurance um in cups and then they also had the gatorade gatorade endurance gels mm -hmm. um i per i bring my own gels personally so i don't use those yes yeah, same i was equipped with your fancy nutrition <laughs> <laughs> um now if you're planning to take nutrition on the course uh, if you actually buy gatorade endurance and you look at the serving size and how you should actually distribute it it's very potent um at the race, it is not that potent. Um, actually be prepared to not have a standard of mix. And this doesn't just go for this race. This goes for every race that I've been on. I don't think I've been to a single race where Gatorade has tasted the same at any of the stops. Now, the hard part with that is you don't really know what you're getting from a carb or sugar perspective. So you might be getting way too potent. So you're getting way too much and you might have stomach or GI issues, or you might not be getting enough, which might lead to cramping. Yeah. Um, so while it's a nice refreshing splash to have some Gatorade with the water, um, I would definitely prepare to bring your own nutrition just because then that way you don't have to play with something new. The rule is nothing new, nothing on, race new on race day. And I ignored that during the Disney half because it was feeling nice and cool and I wasn't feeling bad. I took Gatorade the first couple aid stations and definitely paid for it with cramps later on in the race. So this race, I just stuck to water, even though it was really taunting to like, oh, Gatorade. I stuck with water and honestly, I was really grateful that I did. And yeah, my race went off without a hitch because mm -hmm. of that, because I stuck with my same nutrition. I stuck with water and my like regimen that I had, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly right. Now there's, you'll see people out there that bring no water. You'll see people that have hydration packs. They have the hydration packs on their waists, mm -hmm. our hips, some mm -hmm. in their hands. Um, we both carried our water bottles. Yes, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel worried. I know for my first half, I wasn't really quite sure what my water intake was going to be. Did I need to bring my own water or should I rely on what was there? Um, I know that there is a lot of anxiety that people have around that. I myself had it too. So from my first three or so marathons, I constantly wore my hydration pack Yeah. because it just, it helped me know that I had water if I needed it. Um, and then I took water at every single aid station. So never pass an aid station. That's just kind of a good rule of thumb to get into. Um, if you're Passing by an aid station, take water. And if anything, if you don't want to drink it, throw it on your head. Mm. Um, it helps cool you down and it helps remind you to, to keep drinking. Even if you just take a sip, it's okay. Sometimes it feels good just to take a sip and then spit it out. Um, but never pass by an aid station because you always have to be in front of your hydration at all times. And walk the aid stations. Yes, that's something that you like to Saving do. Saving grace. Aid stations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So um, it was, it's a great race. The finish line is an uh, awesome atmosphere. So it's about a quarter of a mile of a finish line shoot, which is really cool. Um, so they have barriers uh, up on the sides. You have people cheering from pretty much the last turn to come around all the way through to the finish line. Uh, they had great MC support, um, yep. good DJ. Mm -hmm. Perks of finishing, I was in the Blue Corral, which was the over the two hour mark. Perks of that is when I was finishing, everyone was lined up for the 8K about ready to start because all of us had pretty much been close to finishing. 
And what was great about that is my entire finish line shoot, I had everyone lined up for the 8K cheering for me. So that was really cool to feel that atmosphere and not feel left behind because I'm a leisurely runner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to have people cheering you on. Mm -hmm. um, now afterwards, they uh, they have a lot of volunteers. So um, again, we cover the medals. These are awesome medals. They always have been awesome medals. It, this is this is a race that I'll do constantly. I don't know if I'll do it virtually just because virtual races aren't the yeah, same. Yeah, it's the atmosphere. It's and the atmosphere. that run is just so beautiful. You can't. Yeah, it's so much fun to get out there. You can't beat that. Um, they had, what was it? We had, they had peach fruit cups. They had water bottles. They had Gatorade. Cheese it. Cheese it. Constantly had opportunities to grab food, water, Gatorade. Um, they had a lot of medical personnel there too. Yeah. They always do. One, like Tampa, that. it being a, um, um, a historically humid environment. Yes, they passed the out towels, towels in, and they were pre-dunked in, in cold freezing water. cold water, which mm -hmm. was amazing. They gave you this before they even gave you your medal because they were like, no, <laughs> cool down. Yep. They had, um, for, for people who might be um, a little timid about races themselves, uh, the medical staff and the, the police support was a police at every single intersection. Um, there were no active roads that we were running on, so all the roads were closed. Um, I've been on races to where we have not had closed roads and it that does yield a lot of uh, I'd say worried feelings especially if you're new to running and races and you might get claustrophobia with a lot of people around you um, they had uh, multiple ambulances staged um, they had wheelchairs at the finish line for um, people if they needed them um, and it just all in all it's just it's great support that they have for the race so definitely worth the entry fee uh, remember your entry fee isn't just for your medal and for your shirt and your swag bag your entry fee also goes uh, probably to some of their charities that they have um, and also gives them the ability to offer this amazing level of race support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very obvious that Tampa is proud of this event obviously it's tied with Gasparilla which if you don't know is a huge event in Tampa and it's great to just see the support of the community come out in full force. Like he said, the police department was everywhere and they were actually happy to be there and were cheering us on mm -hmm. as we passed and Kevin and I make it a point that every time we pass law enforcement officer or medical volunteer, professional, better, like yeah, volunteer, anyone. we thank them for being there because they had to wake up early on a Sunday morning to be there. Yeah, yeah. And they're there cheering you on and they're there providing you with the race support. So mm -hmm. um, it's great to have that. Oh, we got something. Excuse me. Whoa. We interrupt this program for nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, now the after party that they had, they had um, a live band, they had food, they had local restaurants that were there either selling um, mixed drinks, beer, um, you got a beer coupon with your bib. So I drank mine and hers. Yep. Um, enjoyed that. <laughs> and what was really awesome is there's a Publix uh, restaurant grocery store, however you refer to it, right yes. there at the finish line. So when I finished, I was able to cheer people on for a little bit, then go pick up our pub subs. So we had a nice, awesome pub sub to eat as you cross that finish line and cool down. Oh, that was incredible. Um, and <laughs> with where the race is located, like I said, on channel side, Tampa Convention Center is pretty much the heart um, of the race. Uh, that's where you pick up your packet. That's where they have race support there during the race, after the race. Um, there are so many hotels around Tampa in that area, so many opportunities, parking garages, so many restaurants. So if you're looking for a staycation or you're looking to actually do a uh, racecation, um, Tampa is a great spot. It's a very easy airport to get to and the airport is right around the corner from the Tampa Convention Center So also very easy to get to and from the airport to the convention center. So um, You could park you could take an uber and you could get a hotel room and you could walk absolutely everywhere um, For the race for after the race and you would have tons of opportunities Yeah, the great thing about Tampa too is we have the electronic scooter system mm -hmm. So there's always different types of scooters available as well, too like he said, everything is walking distance accessible. What's cool too is because it's on channel side in the heart of Tampa Bay, there's also the river walk. So Saturday, we spent a lot of the day, we checked in right away on Saturday at like 1030. And then we were able to enjoy the bay, the views, and we grabbed a drink too right there on the mm -hmm. river walk. And the river walk is a great way to spend your day before race. And the race finishes right there on the river walk as well too. So you can complete your day 
walk out your sore legs yeah. doing all of that as well too. Exactly right. So all in all, it's a fantastic race. Highly, highly recommend it. We'll be doing it next year. Oh, I'll be doing it next year. I don't know if you'll do the half. I don't know about the half. I love the AK distance though. We'll mm -hmm. see. I don't know. If the metal is even prettier than this one. I might. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Any, anything else you want to cover? No. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, Kevin, Amanda, he does a lot of the races and I attend a lot of them, but yeah, we just wanted to give a background on this race and yeah. And if you have any questions about races, race preparation, nutrition, hydration, medals, planning, I'm happy to help because it is a fantastic community to be a part of and uh, we hope you have a good time and get to enjoy it too.